Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Thursday, March 7th. We have got a free agency plan for your Jacksonville Jaguars. Free agency unofficially kicks off this upcoming Monday, right? March 11th. Crazy how fast time is flying here. Maybe it's dragging along for some of y'all, but uh, the NFL calendar is moving right along. And we're going to look at this free agency plan. This isn't necessarily how I would play things out if I was running the show. This is how I think Jaguars general manager Trent Baalke is looking at it right now, how he is hoping that this can play out over the next week or so. So we're going to go ahead and dive into it. If you enjoy the content here, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com shop, pick up some new Duval gear. So the Jaguars right now are sitting at about $20 million in effective cap space after moving on from Darius Williams, Rayshon Jenkins, and Foley Fatukasi after placing the franchise tag on Josh Allen. After the rookie class is accounted for, they're at about $20 million in effective cap space. One thing to keep in mind, though, they do not have to have the money or the cap space, I should say, to sign their rookie class until they have to sign their rookie class. So they can overspend a little bit right now, figure out some extensions, some void years, and get cap compliant with the rookie class later on if they desire to do that. Uh, I'm not saying that they will. That's just something to keep in mind, right? You don't have to have the cap space for your rookie class until you have to sign your rookie class. So I think what Trent Baalke would like to have happen is sign Josh Allen. Now, the reason I think he would like that to happen is because it's going to clear up a whole bunch of cap space for you. Uh, Let's say it's a $27 million deal deal over four years. That's what it takes to get it done with Josh Allen, which I think is more than reasonable. Uh, Team out after year three, that's a 2024 cap hit of about $10 to $11 million. We'll say $11 million, which saves you $13 million in cap space right now because he's currently on the cap for $24 million, right? So that would be a huge cap savings for the Jaguars. Congrats, now you're at $33 million in cap space. Is it going to be that easy? I don't think so because Trent Baalke sat on his hands seemingly all of January instead of getting this um, contract negotiation rolling. Obviously could have started during the season or even prior to the season as well. Two things I would have recommended, but we are where we are. We are where Trent Baalke has, has led us here. If you're the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, he would like to sign Josh Allen as soon as possible again so this team can have as much cap space as as they can heading into free agency. Uh, Will he be able to get that done? Remains to be seen. I will tell you, the last two years, Evan Ingram, his franchise tag, they did not get a deal done until July. And then the year before that, Cam Robinson placed on the, the franchise tag on him. They did not get the deal done until the day before the NFL draft. So in those two situations, maybe they didn't have as much urgency to get the deal done. Maybe they do have more urgency now, but this is a much more lucrative deal than either of those as well. Potentially more moving parts, more difficulty, maybe a bigger gap between the two sides, but they certainly do have motivation to get it done so they can go into free agency with as much cap space as possible. And now again, they do have cap space available to them, but They also need to sign Calvin Ridley. Uh, I think that they're going to end up adding a void year to a player or two's contract. I think that's going to be part of the plan here. Um, And a void year is simply a year tacked on where you can move that prorated signing bonus out, spread it out a little bit more uh, so you can save cap space. So, for example, here, Cam Robinson, add a void year to his deal. Uh, His deal ends in 2024 at the end of the season. But if you add a void year, you're not adding another season to his contract. You're just simply paying him some in 2025. Uh, You save 5 million by doing that potentially, right? Now you would have $38 million in effective cap space. If you got the Josh Allen deal done, did a void year for Cam Robinson, then I think Trent Baalke would love to sign Calvin Ridley to a three-year deal. I think he would like it to happen after the start of the new league year, because again, if he does it before that, it is a second round pick. I know he said that doesn't matter as much to him. I don't believe him for a second, right? That's what he should say to kind of uh, to kind of suggest to Calvin Ridley and his agent they really do want him to be here, and they do want him to be here. But you're not giving up a second round pick versus a third round pick if you can help it, right? Um, so he's going to want to sign Calvin Ridley to a three-year deal with a team out after two years, 
Uh, the reason it's not a four-year deal is because Calvin Ridley's getting up there in age, right? He's going to be 30 years old soon. Um, so three-year deal with a team out after two. And I don't think necessarily anybody out there on the free agent market would be offering him more than three years uh, based on what we've seen lately. He certainly has tremendous talent. But again, off the field, didn't play for almost two years, um, and then comes back, has a very good year, maybe not quite as good as what he showed prior to not being on the field for two years, which should be expected. But again, not a spring chicken. So sign Calvin Ridley to a three-year deal with a team out after two years, $20 million per year. PFF projects Calvin Ridley to get $18.5 million, but with the positional scarcity uh, of the wide receiver market right now, I think he's going to end up costing around $20 million. There are some incentives I think you should throw in there to sweeten the pot a little bit um, and, and potentially get him to like $23 million per year with incentives. So that's not going to hit the cap until much later on. Uh, but that would be about an $8 million cap hit at $20 million per year. Now you have about $30 million in effective cap space, right? So I think that if this is how it went for Trent Baalke, I think he'd be really fired up. He'd have plenty of money to upgrade some areas of the roster that need upgrading. Uh, I think that they would like to sign a center. To me, Lloyd Cushenberry makes the most sense. He's a 26-year-old vet, three-year deal, team out after two years, right? PFF projects $12.5 million per year. We'll say 13 and a half because that's kind of how bulky rolls. When he likes a guy, he throws a bag at him. Not when they're his own players, but when they're incoming free agents, right? Uh, that's a 2024 cap hit of about $5 million. Lloyd Cushenberry has been a very consistent pass protector, in my opinion. And this might not be popular with everyone. You do need to get more physical and you need to get better in the run game. But the bottom line is, in Doug Peterson's offense, they are going to be pass first. Always. Trevor Lawrence... Doug Peterson, this is going to be a pass-first offense. You need to protect Trevor Lawrence up the middle, which you could not do in 2023 uh, at a high enough clip. So I think Lloyd Cushenberry makes a lot of sense in that regard. There's plenty of options, though, on a center market. That's just the one guy I came on, but uh, I think that there, there there's five, six potential options at center for a starting center or someone to compete with Luke Fortner. Compete, right? Um so, you're now at $25 million in effective cap space. I think Chidobi Awuzie makes a ton of sense for the Jaguars. I've talked about it. Three years, $13 million per year. That's a little bit over what PFF projects, again, because Trent Baalke just likes to throw the bag. Um, good man cover corner, physical, athletic, experienced, playing very well right now, prime of his career, experience under Chris Richard, the Jaguars' secondary coach. They worked together in Dallas uh, you're now at $20 million in cap space. And Shadobi Awuzie, he gives you someone who has, again, tons of starting experience, but physical, athletic, can play man cover, can press. And now you have two legitimate starting corners in Tyson Campbell and Shadobi Awuzie. I think they also try to sign Jeff Okuda. I just think that that is a deal. It's going to be negligible cap space, probably nothing guaranteed. Let's say it's about a million dollar cap hit. He has history with Ryan Nielsen. He is super talented. Injuries have slowed him down. To me, that sounds like a Trent Baalke signing, to be sure. And I think, you know, bringing him in as a potential CB3, outside CB3, if he can stay healthy and get right in your system, that could be a home run, a home run type of signing. Of course, the odds seem stacked against him right now, just based on recent injury history, but we'll see how it plays out. Uh, I think Sheldon Rankins, another player that just makes a ton of sense for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think that they're going to want to add an interior defensive lineman. They have Devon Hamilton. They have Roy Robertson-Harris. I think they'd like to add someone to make Roy Robertson-Harris more of a rotational player, and I think Sheldon Rankins could do that. Uh, he played with Ryan Nielsen in New Orleans, played for Ryan Nielsen in New Orleans, I should say. Uh, it would be... Uh, stealing him from a division rival, played for the Texans last year. Two years, $11 million per year. Again, a little bit over what PFF projects. $4 million cap hit. He has interior pass rush juice, someone to start next to Devon Hamilton and make Roy Robertson-Harris more of that rotational guy, as I mentioned. I think that makes too much sense. Now you have $15 million in effective cap space. I think they want to sign Ezra Cleveland. 
you know, they traded for him for a reason. I don't think they were ever trading for him to have a half year rental. I think they want to keep him around. I think that, um, you know, the Jaguars offensive line coach, Phil Rauscher, wanted him for a reason. I think Trent Baalke and Doug Peterson wanted him for a reason. So I think three years, $9 million cap hit, three or $9 million per year, $3.5 million cap hit. You're now at $11.5 million in effective cap space. And if y'all haven't been paying attention over the last couple of weeks, the Jaguars, when they sign new deals, new contracts, it is generally a cap hit of about 35 to 40% of the average annual value. You can thank Shad Khan being willing to write large, large signing bonuses for the Jaguars' ability to prorate the year one uh, cap hit throughout over the rest of the contract, right? So that's kind of how the Jaguars roll when it comes to signing players. As you see Murray hanging out with us in the background, y'all can say hi. Uh, but yeah, I think Ezra Cleveland staying there at left guard for them, just kind of having some some stability, which they talked about not having in 2023, I think would make a lot of sense. At edge, I think they want another real pass rushing edge. I, I do. You know, they've been linked to multiple guys, Hassan Reddick, Daniil Hunter. I think they might come in at too high of a price tag, but I wouldn't be shocked, right? Hassan Reddick, he, you would have to trade for him. Daniil Hunter is set to hit free agency. How much will he make at his age with his injury history? That'll be very interesting to watch. I would definitely be keeping an eye on him um, to have a three-headed monster of Josh Allen, Trayvon Walker, and Daniil Hunter. That would be awesome. Uh, but I think Trent Baalke is going to be close to getting that deal done, but not being able to get it done. Uh, I think Josh Uche will end up making a lot of sense. Perfect DPR candidate, designated pass rusher for this team. He's the right age, has very good arm length, which you know Trent Baalke loves, experienced in the role as a de designated pass rusher. I say two years, $8 million a year, $3.2 million 2024 cap hit uh, for a guy that can come in and certainly give you juice, give you a lot more juice as a third edge rusher than you have had since Arden Key departed following the 2022 season. And there you go. You still have some cap space to work with after all these moves. So I think that this will be similar to uh, to the plan. Even if, if even if they can't get Josh Allen under contract before wave one of free agency, I still think this will be a similar plan because they have a couple roster uh, cap saving mechanizations that they can use, again, like void years, restructures, extensions, et cetera, and uh, be able to have enough effective cap space to go – pursue these players we just talked about. So in the end, I think that Trent Baalke is going to want to come out of this free agency with a starting center or a center that can compete again, air quotes with Luke Fortner signing Calvin Ridley, signing a starting cornerback and one who has the skill to start and Jeff Okuda signing a quality defensive tackle, signing a edge who can get some pressure as a designated pass rusher, bringing back Ezra Cleveland. I think if you do that, you can uh, go into the 2024 NFL draft not necessarily needing a single starter, not having to reach for need, but planning ahead for 2025 throughout the draft, adding depth where it makes sense, um, and, and going BPA on their board as much as they can. That's what they like to do. They've shown that. They do not like to go in the draft feeling pigeonholed into having to draft a specific player or a specific position, right? So I, I think that's similar to how it's going to play out, similar to how Trent Baalke would like it to play out. For me, the one big difference there, obviously, I think it, I would be a little surprised if they get the Josh Allen deal done before free agency or early on. I would also be surprised, not surprised, but if I had to put my money on it right now, I think Calvin Ridley ends up somewhere else because I think that there's just so many teams that are going to be hungry for a starting caliber wide receiver uh, of Calvin Ridley's talent level. And I think that the Jaguars are going to get outbid because even though they do have plenty of effective cap space right now, they don't have as much as a lot of other teams. There are some teams sitting out there with 50, 60, $70 million in cap space that need wide receiver. Why wouldn't they drop a bag on Calvin Ridley? Right? Uh, we'll see how it plays out. I hope Calvin Ridley is in Jacksonville in 2024 and beyond, but uh, that's the one thing I think 
it's going to end up coming back to bite Trent Baalke that he did not get a Josh Allen deal done earlier, and then he couldn't place the franchise tag on Calvin Ridley, and then that opens the door for all these teams throwing all these different offers at Calvin. And if I was Calvin's agent right now, I wouldn't be signing anything before the start of free agency, right? It's next week. Let's hear what other teams have to offer. Drive the price up for the Jaguars, and if they don't want to match, we're going to listen to the money because money talks in the NFL. It certainly does. We'll see if Trent Baalke and the Jacksonville Jaguars can get it right in free agency. We'll see how it plays out. And again, this is not necessarily how I would handle free agency for the Jaguars this year, but this is how I think they're going to want this to look in free agency starting next week. It's going to be quite a week. Very interesting stuff ahead for the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you enjoy the content here, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com shop, pick up some new Duval gear. Y'all have a good one.